we're about to watch the video called the New World Forge and Eternum Community Question and, uh, and Answers. Let's go dive right in. We'll see you guys in just a second. Is there a chance we could see hippos in Eternum in 2023? Please say no. No. Please, oh, thank you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I swear to God, if they said yes, I'm not watching the rest of this video. I would... Hi, everybody. Welcome to Forge and Eternum, where we talk about all things new, new world. Today is our first Q&A in 2023. I'm pretty excited. Dave and Katie are joining us. Cheers. So, oh, and of course, Mr. Lovin's going to be asking the questions from behind the camera. Um, be gentle and let's go. Be gentle. I would love to know why the most hot topics problems of the game are either left behind or worked so late that the wave of angry and unsatisfied players is already washed away. Yeah, this is a, uh, it's tough because it doesn't, that, that's certainly not the goal. As a team, we're always all over the forums. We're trying to be as transparent as we can. We're in Reddit. We're in all of the different social media places getting feedback. So we try to get to the problems that we think are the most important and bubbling up. And I think it's important for people to realize that what, what might be really important for someone is not as important for someone else, but then someone else has something else that's different. So our job is to try to get through those and figure out what is the most important. And then the other reality is some things just take longer than others. And so while it may feel like we're not paying attention to something, you know, in, in a lot of cases we are, but we just, we don't want to talk about it and say, hey, we're working on this thing that's going to take, you know, three months. And, it sounds almost disingenuous, disingenuous when we do that. So what we try to do is give you as much detail about what we're working on now as we can without making promises that we don't believe we can hit. Yeah, we're definitely trying to be super communicative. Um, and we have weekly meetings multiple times a week where we are bringing together our customer support folks, our community folks, our devs are really highly invested in the game devs who are the 1% the of completionist wild animals. Um, and we bring together all of these people multiple times a week to make sure that what we're focusing on for fixes are the right things to focus on. And as Scott said, some things just take a little bit longer than other things or take a lot longer than other things because they're design changes and they're not just bug fixes. I'm going to pause it right there. I just want to talk to you guys real quick. Can you guys give me a little bit insight? Uh, chat, we can see you right behind me. Um, is it disingenuous if I told you guys I'm working on a YouTube video and I haven't produced it yet and you're wondering like, hey, when is this YouTube video actually you're going to bring out? You said you're going to bring it out last week. I'm like, look, it's a lot harder than I thought. My introduction is terrible. I'm trying to work on the, you know, the middle part and I had to rework it because it's just not worth watching that part. Um, but I'm daily thinking about it and trying to produce something. If you want to see the version I currently have, we can show you, but the problem is it'll just cause bugs and stuff like that as an example. Uh, in my opinion, heck no. I love some info on what's being worked on. And so, Berezuma, you're saying like you would want them to basically come out and saying these are the current fixes in their patch notes. like current works and progress like we are working on this and like this list of patch notes and the stuff on the bottom it shows off like the stuff they're currently still tackling uh i think that would be nice you know at the very bottom of the entire patch notes show off the current work in progress you know just don't say it verbally but just show off you have it in the list issues is mostly concern is around uh, is about player retention um it makes total sense player retention is going to be very difficult to tackle let me see what Ewok says. I think people knowing that the devs are working on something that is possibly causing them to quit the game might make them stay because they know the issue is being worked on at least. I agree with Ewok X, 100%. I, I just need more transparency as to saying, hey, you heard me. It's in the text for work, current working on. So every patch note that comes out and what you've patched up, the text on the bottom still shows off. It's in there. It's in the list. Even if it's in the list for a freaking year, at least it's still being worked on. And if we want you to talk about it, and the, and the community's like, hey, you know what? Come back every three months, every quarter, and bring up that subject of all the current stuff you're working on and tell us what's going on. And we'll be happy to be patient because it's just the level of communication I think we want. Let's go find out what else they're talking about. I just, I just don't, I kind of get like, I kind of get frustrated when I don't know why isn't this simple thing? <laughs> communication is hard, but key. A hey, yo, C I K for the win. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, so that's something that we also have to take into consideration, but we'll definitely try to be more communicative or as communicative as we can be. Can you please provide some insight on how the team deals with botting in the game? Yeah, so bots are nemesis, uh, Neshatoon and bots. 
Um, so bots are a very complex issue, and there's something that we we do again talk about multiple times a week. Um, we have a review with our um, tech folks. We have a review with people who are putting in like more telemetry, are able to detect bots. Uh, we take player reports, but we have to walk this fine line of who we're actually putting strikes against and bans against because there are, and this is a lesson if you go back to many, many videos ago, we have, we thought that some people were bots and they were actually people. They were just so good at what they were doing that they mimicked bots. So we, we have to try to walk this fine line of the player reports that are coming in, um, how many of those reports are coming in at different times, not just all at the same time, right? Um, so we need multiple points of contact. Um, so they're talking about bots here, and if you guys just tuned in, we're we're watching the video for the QA post, and they're saying, how do you deal with bots? And it seems to me from this limited amount that she's talked about is they look at statistics of how much you've crafted or how much you've, not crafted, sorry, how much you've gathered and then how much you post on the trade and post and how that money gets pulled around. So if you literally have bot-like activity, you could be banned. That's crazy. We also need to actually have telemetry, um, which I'm not going to give anything away because I don't want people who create bot scripts to learn what we're doing. That's also part of this. Um, so another reason why we don't talk too much online about or in writing or in these videos about what we're doing with bots, um, because we don't want them learning what, what we're up to next to try to combat them. It, it's hard though. Our security team is constantly working toward this and chasing it and tracking it. And I'm really proud of the work they've done because I feel like we're in a much better spot bot wise than you know than we were a year ago. And it's continuously getting better. And I personally run into I, I don't see them nearly as much as I used to in the game. And I know I play on one or two servers versus the over the overall you know set we have. But there's a lot of there's a lot of effort that goes toward this, and I think we're making pretty good progress. We totally are, yeah. but and we're still going to keep doing it, right? Bots, bots be botting, and we be combatting. Yeah, security work <laughs> never ends; just constantly changes, For evolves, sure. and For changes. Sure. Yeah. So one of the things is like she's saying earlier, and I think a lot of these devs have even personally told me, Archie, don't post any of the exploits on YouTube or say it on stream because we won't have the ability to stop it in time, and so. That that's just that's the current AGS system. They just don't have the ability to put a stop to that exploit unless they want to just shut down the trade trade merchant in your trading uh, inventory room or your ability to use that said skill, like you saw with the crouch on the musket skill. I don't think they have GMs that can go fly into that character and instantly teleport onto you and see if that character is actually a bot and touches an empty node and keeps doing that and then just removes them off the server. I think they just look at an Excel spreadsheet of data and then pick which ones they think are bots and which ones are not. They can't do an automated system. If you guys don't remember what happened to Lost Ark. Meow. Lost Ark. <laughs> Yo, meow. Uh, Lost Ark, guys, go check on Twitter, uh, is getting blasted on Steam reviews and getting blasted on Twitter. Uh, they just sent out their automated bot killing machine. They just basically just uh, removed tons of players that were AFK for a year. <laughs> That's freaking tongue, you sick um, they just removed a ton of players that just haven't played. And those individuals just had their accounts basically have a ding on Steam. Uh, and they're just so pissed off that they got unnecessarily banned. And a lot of people are just vetoing the game from that. So I don't think AGS wants to follow suit of what just Lost Ark did and do an automatic, automatic bot ban system where they can piss a ton of people off. Will the dev team make further rollback changes to armor type, uh, light, medium, heavy? Are they looking at the feedback from previous changes? Uh, yeah, so I think equip load in our game and the balance between equip load is something that has, you know, evolved over time. If you remember, heavy meta was the thing, you know, at the start of the game. Obviously, now we're in a totally light meta era. Uh, we are definitely aware of it. We are going to be making some changes, and in fact, they're coming very soon to a, a PTR near you. We're going to be making some changes uh, and the main gist of it is right now, the idea is that light armor needs to be strong, like do a lot of damage. But the thing is, you can be in light armor, do all that damage, and still feel relatively safe due to certain perks and things like that. Uh, so that's really what we're going to tackle. We're going to try to re try to make you have to take that risk. If you want the extra damage from light, uh, you're going to have to be able to take some risks. So some of those perks are now going to be based on the armor of the character. Uh, so things like Resilient or Shirking Fort will be less strong if you're wearing light armor. Oh, wow. 
Okay. I thought they were going to remove Resilient and Shirking 4 off of Light Armor. I was about to lose my mind. No one would ever live in Light Armor ever again. Impossible. Holy f***. Thank God, Shirking 4. Yeah, because you don't have Shirking 4, Spoofle, you son of a b It's going to be interesting how much they nerf the Light Armor for Shirking 4 and Resilient. It is going to ruin a lot of the DPS classes, but it's also going to screw over the healer classes. They're going to be a lot easily are a lot easier to kill. So hopefully the light armor classes that chase the light armor healers uh, can get killed faster, so thus it doesn't really make that big of a difference. But we'll see. Will you address why we cannot have blue healing, oblivion, ice storms during PvP and wars? Sure. Yeah, tell me. On that very same PTR Dave's referring to, we will, and you'll be able to play it, and we're so excited for this. It's one of the features we've been... Uh, wanting to do for a while, and I think it's going to make, uh, it's going to change the way war goes for a lot of people. And it's, it's going to change a lot of OPR. PvP, is OPR. Awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. It's huge, and uh, very excited for this change to come in. We've already been playing it internally, and it's, it feels really good. It's also a good plug for the PTR, which is the public test realm. For That's why you're not showing it to me on this video. You want me to go on the PTR to go test it. You sick f Go wash your hands. Um, damn it. I want to, I want to see it now. I want to go PTR, guys. God, this is, this is so not fair. Anybody who's hearing that word for the first time, um, that when that does come up and we do announce those changes, which we oh, do publicly ahead not, of uh, the download, yet. that you should hop on and we'll try to get our community team to run some wars so that you can try it out. Um, they're usually happy to do that. Um, it's just us that need to get it together. And so we will get it together so we can get that tested. But for sure, this. join the PTR. And we'd love feedback on it, right? It's uh takes a lot of people to test war and OPR, and so, like, as you're playing it, if you see problems, let us know. Yep. Okay, time out, time out. I swear to God, if you want me to run PvP missions in PTR just to cause a war, I quit. I'm never gonna do a PTR ever again. That is the... No! Don't... Don't, don't do that. Just set up the war, let us basically click on green versus blue, and let it be 10 versus 10 out of war situation. That's totally fine. You know, don't make us run freaking PvP missions, for the love of God. Roadmap seems to be extremely PvE-centric. Is this the direction that the game plans to take continuing forward? Out of the nine planned content in the roadmap, only one is PvP-focused, cross-server OPR, and that happens to be a quality-of-life feature. Yeah, so when we say nine planned, it's nine announced. There's a lot of work going on in the game, so to answer the question really directly, no, the direction is not we're just a PvE game. We uh, have a lot of conviction around supporting our PvP players, and there is significant work in 2023 going toward that. Uh, I'm not going to get super specific right now. We will in about a month, though. Well, we'll have a lot more to share on it. And like I said, we just mentioned a PvP feature that's going to show up on the PTR. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see more over the next several months. Yeah, and the combat balance changes we talked about, that was the equip load is one, but there's a number of them, and it's going to dramatically affect PvP. Uh, you know, things like the musket will likely be in our sights also. So, the musket. Yes. Oh, the musket. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. it'll be in our sights, so to speak. Wow. Do you really think the musket should have the highest range than every single weapon in the entire arsenal of New World? Uh, I think, in my opinion, if I was going to design a game, I wouldn't make a single weapon that can outrange every other weapon. Either make them all the same range or not. And if they're not all the same range... Uh, put it by 10 more meters so that way it stands out a little bit further like you see in Playing like let's say League of Legends You got Caitlyn who can actually shoot a little bit further with her sniper than literally shooting across the entire map So it, it just makes me kind of question the sanity of why do they make the musket the way it is today? The range is not a problem. It's a stacking damage that never falls uh, Off well, I mean you have to remember male elf if the musket didn't have that range it would never get that kill, which will never have the stacking damage in the first place. Muskets can't sit on the rock and shoot down into the freaking OPR circles. Muskets can't sit on top of the defense space inside of the town and shoot outside of the defense space. Let's that was good, this. Dave. <laughs> How long have you been working on that one? <laughs> Look at his well, smile. Speaking of that, uh, does Look, at, <laughs> Look at his smile. She clearly knows she's poking fun at this guy. Clearly is working on it for too long or not at all. Let's find out. CSC 80% of forum posts about musket and great swords. Any plans for some balance? Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, we do see it. Uh, and I think, you know, 
The musket, we, we did try to take action in December with our changes to the damage fall off. It obviously did not achieve the result we wanted. We're aware of that. Uh, we are going to be taking some more drastic measures uh, in the upcoming PTR again. Uh, the two main things we're going to be doing is, one, we're going to be looking at the accuracy of it and how that works and sort of the gameplay around that. I think it'll require players to become a little more uh, in aim to hit their shots. So I think that'll be a little more stationary. So that'll be big. The other thing is I think mortal empowerment, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is another big cascading Hot factor. Hot button <laughs> item right there. So it would not surprise me to see some nerfs to that perk in combination with the, uh, the changes to the musket. Yeah, and I think it hurt the musket, you know, we made a few mistakes and an exploit got stuck in that only really affected the musket, so it, it exaggerated a situation that already wasn't great, uh, which is, you know, apologies for that, and we're going to be more careful going forward. Can you? Okay, so so they're thinking about the the musket is going to get a stationary nerf, it sounds like. When you shoot, you stand still. Mortal Empowerment is getting a nerf. This is two different skills in the game. Mortal Empowerment is really directly correlated to the musket because they stay alive forever. They're on the defensive side. Uh, they just live on top of the uh, the fort, and they keep killing everybody. That last tap is all they need to do to get that mortal empowerment buff. If they find one person's name on the field that they get two shots in, they're going to memorize that person's name, keep finding that one person, and keep killing them until they have 30 stacks, and then go after everyone else. And so I think mortal empowerment is pretty toxic, especially with the musket's range. So if you really want to see a real musket nerf, Stop uh, nerfing the musket's behavior as a play style. Just nerf the range and make it to where the damage just doesn't hit the target farther than, let's say, 10 more meters in the bow. And then it's officially done. Discuss how customer support works for New World and the best way to achieve results or actually contact someone at AGS that can help with in-game issues. Yeah, so um, in-game issues, I mean, that's kind of broad, but... Essentially, anything where you maybe um, you didn't receive something that you purchased or you're having an issue with a server transfer or anything like that that's kind of a technical thing, um, you'll want to contact customer support. Anything that's feedback or anything where you have some time to wait for maybe a dev to respond or a community manager to respond, go to the forums. That's where, you know, if you reach some point where um, you think that there's a better option for a quest, right? Or you think that something maybe is boring or you think something's really fun and you want us to double down on that, like that's where you go, you go to the forums. If it's something where you're in a specific spot in the world and there's a problem right there, do the in-game reports. Um, those tell us exactly where you're located. They give us system information. It gives us a lot of really detailed information that's unfortunately no longer available to players like your XYZ coordinates. We'll still get those. Um, that was part of our anti-bot initiative. Um, but those are the three different paths that you're going to want to take. And they they do work if there's, if there's some issue with that again, like go to the forums. <laughs> Leave feedback there for our community managers, and they are really quick about getting that feedback to us. So if there's something that needs to be done quickly, that's the way to do it. Can we get more info on the future revamps of Zone? You know, Brightwood and I think Weaver's Finn are next, but other than that, we don't know anything about it. Yes. So um, by the end of the year, our plan is to have the entire 1 through 60 Tempest storyline completed. Um, that may not hit all of the zones, but the storyline and that quest line is going to be all there. And I think it's, uh, I can say that with high confidence. Awesome. <laughs> um, uh, are there any plans to revamp the portals to provide rewards outside of shards and gypsum? Could it possibly reward us with umbrals? Uh, I don't want to talk exactly about what the exact rewards are, but I think we, we still really like, uh, you know, the breaches. Uh, and I think what we're planning to do is make them feel like a little more of an event. Right? So what we'll probably do is reduce the frequency of them, reduce the amount of them. But when they happen, uh, I think they'll be very rewarding. And I think that's sort of the general direction we're going with them. I would say thank you. Honestly, thank you so much for basically saying that. Because literally the uh, corruption breaches suck. Um, forms do not help. I got stuck in lava for two weeks and I couldn't get out. XLG, no! That sucks, dude. How you do it, my dude? Thankfully, the players in game saved you, XLG. Uh, getting stuck in lava for two weeks and you couldn't get out. That sucks. I'd be curious to see how the devs responded to that. Like, how do they, how do they solve that problem? That's a unfortunate one. It's a huge thread, too. Oof. Yeah. 
I don't think they did a good job. <laughs> Clearly, I have a, I have a, I have a player here that's that didn't actually have a dev support him. It was actually players throwing sacred grounds on each other and putting on extreme amount of healing just to keep that person alive on the lava, just to go pick up XLG's dead body. It was so crazy. And um, have you considered separating weapon stats for PvP and PvE? Right now, it's not working trying to balance for both when a lot of PvP changes make weapons bad for PvE. This is a huge one, okay? I like this question a lot. Because I've been trying to say this for a very long time. Please separate the PvE gear and the PvP gear to where if you're going to nerf something for PvP, it's nerfed for PvP and not nerfed for PvE. Uh, like, for instance, um, if you're going to nerf skills that are going to be super powerful for war, and then you go and try to do the PvE side of things, it's practically a useless skill. Like what's happened with the fire staff. Separating stats could mean weapons being actually good for PvE. And oh, actually, time out. They did say the PTR is going to have blue and uh, green healing circles. Like blue for healing and red for healing circles, I guess. That's what they did for for pvp they said that it's going to be coming to ptr so it was earlier yes they did say that uh they didn't announce when the ptr is so i'm very excited uh to see what these changes are i am going to be one of those you know customers that is clearly not satisfied with the turnaround of such a simple mechanic that i wanted a long time ago uh so i'm kind of pissed off still i'm not happy as a customer even though i like playing new world a lot and as, an, as a streamer, this is my full-time job, it's f taking forever. It's kind of like watching StarCraft 1, and then finally StarCraft 2 comes out, and then the guy comes in there and he says, Hell, it's about time. All right, let's go dive right in. Let's go learn more about what the heck is going on this Q&A. They didn't talk about war. They didn't talk about you know, a lot of things. But let's go continue hearing. Only we have the banes, which are PVE only, and bad for PVE, like what's happened with the fire staff. Separating stats could mean weapons being actually good for PVE, and more frequent PVP balance changes to prevent a stagnant meta without affecting PVE. Very pointed question, but a good one. Uh, yes, it's super difficult to balance. Is that a cat? They have a cat. Okay. AGS is even cooler now. They just got like 10 points, maybe a thousand points. God knows. If this cat that says meow on the stream, it's game over. I don't know what I'm supposed to do anymore. I can't get angry at them. It's obviously PvE and PvP together. Please uh, tell me the cat goes up there and sleeps up there. That would be legendary if that cat found a way to climb uh, up there. It's something we're working on. Oh, is that a dog? It's a f***ing dog. We actually do have some tools already in our tool belt, right? Like things like Resilient uh, are PvP it's only. It's we a have puppers. Right. The Banes, which are PvE only. Even and better. I think we're going to be digging into those even more uh, as a first attempt at this. I think the perfect example is I think a lot of people say, hey, ranged weapons aren't viable in uh, high-level content, PvE content, like mutators or things like that. And there's some truth to that. And I think one of the things we're going to be trying out, again in the PTR, please come try it out, uh, is making the Banes for ranged weapons even more powerful as a way to sort of amp up the the viability of those weapons uh that and we'll also be removing those elemental resistances from the mutations which really hurt the ice and fire staff users oh my god they're actually getting rid of ice and fire staff resistances on the damage done to the monster what was the logic that they had doing that you know like there's some like illogical plays that happens in there you know, maybe we shouldn't nerf Void because that means Void Gauntlet is not going to be in there. Well, we're doing elemental dungeons, but we should make it high resistance. It kind of makes sense because they're a Void monster. They should have high Void resistance. Well, what about any of the magic play? You know, like nobody thought of that when they actually went to put all those notes in there. Uh, this is where me as a gamer overthinks the living crap out of things. And then the actual, you know, person who puts this product into the game I don't know if they actually think about these things and what's the repercussions that are going to make on the actual you know gameplay or the stagnation that we see that everybody has to play a close quarters champion you know that like you guys remember that circle there's like a a, a white circle around the monster that ranged attacks can't hurt it anymore they force more close quarters players playing in you know that like white little barrier that goes around the character the monster right they keep shutting down more and more range because of those features. They need to equalize it. If you're going to make one for freaking range, make one for physical. 
to where none of the physical attacks basically work, you know, and you can't hit it with any close quarters. That means even the tank gets screwed and came and pull aggro, and that's the most... It's going to be ta toxic, to be honest. I don't really know what they're going to do, but we'll see. Uh, so I think that's step one, and I think this is a hard problem. It's something we're looking at. We're going to continue to investigate. I think we are going to start... We're moving more and more to a world where we separate them, but I think uh, doing that in a holistic manner is going to take a while. Uh, but these are, are steps in the right direction, I think. But I think a statement for the community is we agree with you that something needs to be done here, for sure. Yeah. And if you wonder why I keep looking down, a dog keeps running into my legs down. <laughs> yes, this dog. <laughs> Can you zoom out to the dog? Is that possible? <laughs> we need some context. Oh, yeah. Give some context here. We need some context. Chuck is on it. Uh, Amazon ah! has a dogs at work policy where you get to bring your dog, your well-behaved dog, into work, and uh, it's one of the most amazing things. I'm so glad we do it. And Finn is a her dog is Finn is a very well-behaved, very cool dog. Is there a chance we could see hippos in Eterna? How many businesses do that, where you can bring a dog to your work? That is the coolest job to work for because they just, I don't know, that's a genius. Maybe pisses a lot of people off because they have allergies and stuff, but not so many. That is so cool. Uh, questions. Is there a chance that we can see hippos? Do oh, my God. Um, in 2023. No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank no, you. Uh, Hippos are, I think, the, I, I've seen all the people talking about hippos, and I think that it makes a lot of, there's something really fun about seeing it, but I think that it needs the right environment. I would be more inclined for uh, something of the Simeon family or something like that to in, enter first, mm -hmm. but at some point, I think we will have hippos in the game. I just don't know when, and I'm not going to give a year. I'm going to cut the video just to we'll, we'll have hippos in the game, like you just said. <laughs> you got it. I'm on it. Okay, that's it. Well, that does it for today's episode. Uh, we're going to do another one of these in shortly after the next dev uh, update video comes out. And I think Katie had a farewell message. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Forged in Eternum series. We uh, love seeing you guys, and we hope you love seeing us. Where was your <laughs> that you did last time? Sniper. <laughs> this is cool musket. when you do this. This is, this is sniper. No, this is a it's pistol. Not a musket. What? I'm just going to keep you, it all in there. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Kate? You're like, no. Anyways, um, I don't I don't know. Uh, uh that was a letdown.